St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Upper Cow. It is the it is the first Sunday of Christmas, or the first Sunday after Christmas, first Sunday of Christmas. This year we'll actually have two Sundays of Christmas, which which oh isn't always that way. Um, but we will we will hear lessons this morning that we, we don't always read, and that's that's kind of interesting. I'm going to we're going to shorten the service this morning. We're going to sing the first and last verses of the hymns that are assigned to sing more than one verse. Um, just keep us from singing solos this morning. <laughs> At any rate, I am glad you're here. I thank and bless you for all of your good wishes during the Christmas season. Thank you. And may Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year be with you through this whole year to come. If you would rise, please. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who sends the word with angels, who made flesh among all peoples, and who breathes peace on all the earth. Amen. Amen. In Christ we are bold to name our sin and cry out for peace. Holy God, we confess our sin before you. We replace compassion with competition. We seek what is mighty while ignoring the meek. We are quick to anger, but slow to forgive. We have not put love in harmony with you. Wrap us in the grace of your powerful word. Swaddle our hearts with your peace, that all we do in word and deed May you reflect your love, born among us. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy to all people. God has come among us in the child born of Mary. Christ the Lord, in Christ your sins are forgiven, and you are clothed in peace. Amen. We sing together portions of hymn number 300. Jesus Christ, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> First lesson is from 1 Samuel, the second chapter. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Well, then Eli would bless Elkaniah and his wife would say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. Now, the boy Samuel continued to grow in both stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Second chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Now, every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. <clears throat> and when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. And when the festival was ended, they started to return. The boy, Jesus, stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among the relatives and friends, and when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. And after three days, they found him in the temple sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother treasured all of these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. <clears throat> there is a word that, that I need to tell you about, and in many ways you will wonder why I'm doing this. The word is sort of day, which, which looks like a Greek word, but it's a Hebrew word, or that that means, is it, nece it is necessary, it must be. It's a word that gets used this morning. I must be in my father's house. Well, there have been lots of kids around our house in the last day or so, and um, there will be lots more yet this week to come. The frustration that goes with that and the surprises are amazing. It's easy today to think about Jesus as a child, but not so much information to build on. I can't see Jesus being like Sarah somehow. <laughs> today, glimpses from the close close of Luke's birth narrative 
is really the only possibility that we have from Luke for information about Jesus' childhood. What we get this morning is the picture of a pious Jewish family from Galilee in the north traveling to Jerusalem for important events in their child's life. Um, <laughs> this is not Caleb. <laughs> Caleb would be wandering off someplace else, but that's a whole different thing. It was important for that for a Jewish child's family to introduce to the child the Torah. Starting by age 12, it's hard to know the literacy of Jesus' birth family. Did they do the teaching? Or was that up to the local synagogue to do the teaching? From this morning's account to his whole ministry, there will be account after account of Jesus reading and teaching from the Hebrew Scriptures. From the beginning, it is obvious that somebody, whether it was in synagogue or, or his parents, did a great job of preparing Jesus for his bar mitzvah. Of course, on one level, it is possible to say, this is God's son. Of course he knew all that stuff. But this is human knowledge, not divine knowledge. No matter how gifted, he obviously got it. This morning, Jesus is no longer a baby. Perhaps time for his bar mitzvah. Jesus has grown and gone to the big city with his parents. Probably he had been at the temple as a part of the Jewish rites of manhood. And then when his parents were ready to leave, the boy was not there. Their search was frantic, although we are not told the details. And by the way, my, my reference to Caleb, um, Caleb is the grandson from Oklahoma who has a wonderful habit of running off. Um, yeah, that's not what Jesus did. Um, Jesus went someplace and his parents were deeply worried. I remember the morning, or afternoon rather, that, that I got home after doing my usual things when we were in, when we were in Essex. And um, Karen told me that, uh, that, that Jonathan, Jonathan, no, not Jonathan, Tim, had been on a class trip to the, um, to the outdoor school here in Carroll County. And apparently he and a classmate had decided to take a little hike. <laughs> and they got, lost. You have, I mean, I'm glad I didn't know until it was all over, you know. And so I think about Jesus' parents this morning chastising him. Days had passed, and they went to the temple, and they found him precisely where if they had thought about it, he should have been for a number of reasons. And Jesus responds to his parents' reaction, I must be in my father's house. Well, yeah, but we had no idea where you were. Our modern mind has got to ask, is it possible that this is a real story? My mind as a parent and grandparent just goes wacko at the whole notion. But take it at face value. <clears throat> what a very special child. And what wonderful parents to have brought him to this point in his religious education. It is the commitment and understanding that Jesus reflects that will allow him to fulfill his call right up to the cross. 
even when it doesn't make any sense. And then through resurrection. In many ways, it is the faithfulness of earthly parents that opened the door for Jesus' faithfulness. Whether they taught him from the Torah or took him regularly to the synagogue for preparation, I think of the struggle that I have had with confirmation commitment from parents over the years. So for me, that is the one side of the story that I get. The other side is to think of the gift of faith that Jesus brings to go to his earthly family and of their openness to what Jesus taught. Mary would finally follow Jesus all the way to the cross. I think of the time when my kids had opened my eyes and my insights. You see, the kids aren't always the ones who are wandering off, getting lost. Sometimes it's the kids who call us back home. My call this morning to you is twofold. Follow and help those in your charge to follow the faith. To do the hard work that will bring you finally to understanding. And faith and then be open to the insights that come from those in whom you have nurtured the faith Jesus answered his frightened parents and upset parents where else should I be but in my father's house Celebrate your birth, 
even when they are weighed down by grief, loss, poverty, hunger, or injustice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us in the diverse splendor of the universe. Grant us the humility to trust our place in the network of creation, that we live in service to you and the natural world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us through relationships of many kinds, families, friendships, and communities, and nations. Guide us in these relationships that we may recognize the Christ child in one another and show your love to those most vulnerable. Merciful God, hear us prayer. You come to us through people whom the world forgets. Poor shepherds and imprisoned Paul announced your good news. Send your spirit to all who are in prison, struggling with addiction, unwell, or in any need this day, especially those we name. And those whose names fill the list of ongoing prayer concerns of this community. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us in acts of justice and forgiveness. Open our hearts to forgive one another without permitting injustice. Supply us with the wisdom to be clothed with love, binding all things together in perfect harmony. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You come to us through those who have died, yet live with you forever. We give thanks for Stephen, Deacon, and Martyr, who gave his life to tell the story of your love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Savior Jesus Christ, 
In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and enjoy their unending hymn. <laughs> Shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise of coming again, we give thanks to you, Almighty God, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we mercifully ask you to accept our praise and thanksgiving with your word and Holy Spirit, and to bless us, your servants. All of this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come now to the table of the Lord.
These are the gifts of God to the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I would invite you to rise. May the holy and precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you refresh us by the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you in love toward one another and in the blessed hope of everlasting life. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor, give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, God. God.